A big hello and a very warm welcome to Leaders of Tomorrow Season 8 with me, Sonali Krishna. Today I'm joined by a young entrepreneur. He's had quite a journey himself. He took off and set path uh, onto an adventure, a passion of his in 2012. Uh, invested all his energies for three years. It didn't really take off and then he went back to the drawing board and he's come back with a big bang. Uh, in late 2019 and of course in 2020 he's revving up all set to go with even more launches I'm talking about none other than Kavan Bharti Mittal Thank you so much, Kevin, for joining us right here on Leaders of Tomorrow. Pleasure to have you. How's it been so far? I mean, you've had a busy 2020 with, uh, you know, so many launches coming from your stable. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, what you had planned uh, and went into, uh, you know, a conceptualization and, and uh, development stages in 2019 has uh, really paid off for you given the current situation we're living in and how we're forced to embrace technology and the virtual world. So uh, really some good timing and good luck on your side. First four and a half years of hike, we'd built a, a super app to bring India online and scale that to tens of millions of users. And you know, the market shifted and we had no choice but to pivot the business and, and move towards what we're doing today. Uh, but as a, as a company, we can you know, build products pretty fast and also build them to scale, um, scale that very few people have seen in this country. And in 2019, we just asked a simple question, which was, with all the advancements we have in technology, surely we can you know, move the needle forward on what it means to build social products um, you know, for a mobile first emerging market. We pivoted the business starting sort of 20, late 2018, early 2019. And what you're seeing today is effectively you know, the, the fruits of our labor compounding from the last uh, six, nine, 12 months, uh, which uh, you know, landed up in the launch of Hike Land just a couple of weeks ago, which we're extremely excited about. So before we get into the details, uh, I want to just understand from you the journey of Hike itself. In, in 2012, uh, when we set this up, the idea was to go bring a billion people online. Because in 2012, the market was very different. We had uh, expensive data. Data was 2G. Smartphones had just arrived in the scene, and you couldn't download too many apps on a smartphone. And so it was very complicated and tough for a mobile-first population that had not seen the PC, the browser, Yahoo, to sort of come online for the first time. And we said, could we simplify that? And we wanted to build sort of what we called at that time a highway to the internet around the idea of messaging, because messaging is something people understood. They understand extremely well. And today the world calls that a super app. And that was the vision. We built that for the first four, four and a half years, marvelously, uh, got to massive scale. And in 2017, the market changed. And some of the constraints that we were building for, uh, you know, disappeared um, within nine to 12 months, something that, you know, in most companies, in most countries happens over a four or five year period. So we decided to what we call unbundle the super app. Um, and I can tell you today, it was the, the best decision we made. It became clear to us that the future of consumers interacting with apps on their phones is not going to be a super app. We're going to have to unbundle the super app into multiple pillars that stand on their own two feet. And the super app had three pillars. We had messaging around stickers, the social product. We had a game of the day, which is a gaming platform, and we had news and content. And we decided to not to unbundle news and content because it was a space that um, uh, we didn't believe the probability of success was high. And we decided to, to focus on gaming and social as the two pillars we would unbundle from uh, the super app, which we did in 2019. And so in 2019, we launched something called Hike Sticker Chat, which was simply a simple version of the super app focused around messaging and stickers, which is something that Hike has historically been extremely good at. And we made it very simple and added machine learning to the product to make it very easy to recommend stickers at the right time. So communication and expression became a lot easier. But you know, in, in, in the last couple of years, so much has evolved. We have so much uh, advancement of technology that's actually happened. And one of the key things about Hike has been that our, our users spend most of their time, the peak usage in the, in the app between 10 to 12, 30 at night. And that got us thinking, saying, you know, why are people spending this time and this period? And as we spoke to our users and um, 
and, and got some feedback, we concluded that it's not that people are messaging and sending stickers at that time. It's that they're hanging out online because they're, they can't hang out offline. And this is the case globally, but more so in India, because India has two challenges that, that um, you know, uh, as a developing country we have that, that Western markets don't. One is the social norms are catching up. So the market's still pretty conservative, so people can't express themselves freely. Um, and second is, um, beyond tier one cities, the infrastructure is still catching up. India's a big country. A lot of the infrastructure is not like the metro, so their avenues to hang out offline are also limited. So more so, people are finding avenues online to hang out. This is really a cue from what you said. You've said that you observe that people, uh, or rather young people, teens, uh, you know, between 17 and 22, like to hang online. What does that actually mean? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, so we're, we're big believers that internet companies don't create new behaviors. We just take behaviors that exist offline and we bring them online and make them 100 x So, you know, people, like they hang out offline, you know, uh, they chill, they play games, they watch TV, they may go for a movie, they may go for a coffee. People want to hang out with their friends. And because often it's not um, easy to do that in the offline world, especially at night for a slightly sort of younger audience. People find new avenues to hang out with their friends. And that tends to be online today because the internet's become so pervasive. And the big question for us is what is the manifestation of that hanging out online? So far, it's been these transactional messaging applications where you can send one message, one sticker. It's a pretty transactional experience. It doesn't look anything like the real world. So because technology has advanced so much, we, we believe we can build that next step, that next user experience beyond messaging, uh, which is what we're calling Clan today. If I wanted to hang out on Clan, A, what do I do? And B, what's my experience? What are the possibilities of hanging out virtually and what can be done? So the first, there, there are two experiences that we launched inside Highland as a part of the early preview. Um, the first experience is called the home, which is your own home uh, inside Highland. It's previously redefined. You can enter your home, you can invite friends to your home, and you can chill as if you're chilling on the couch um, and, and do a voice call, where you can do activities inside your home. And as a part of the early preview, we've anchored the early preview in the home around the TV. So you can actually watch stuff together while you're in different locations, as if you're sitting together with each other on the couch. We wanted to replicate that, I'm hanging out with you on the couch and watching TV and talking to each other experience in the online world. And the home on Highland does that beautifully. Uh, and you can talk to one another while you're watching videos. The TV today is powered by YouTube. We're actually bringing Netflix, Hotstar, Amazon Prime, Z, Eros, all these partners because the demand for content is very, very big. Um, and that's the, the first experience that we launched in ways people can hang out online. The second experience we've launched is, you know, in, in the real world, people have the ability to bump into other people. That's how you make, end up making new friends. So what if we allowed the possibility of people to bump into new people in the virtual world too? And for that, we built something called the big screen, which is a place that brings people around, that brings people together around the content they love. Think of it as a cinema redefined. And so we are playing shows every day and people actually come and watch those shows and end up bumping into people that actually have the love for the same content. And again, the feedback has been incredible because I feel like in a market like India, especially during COVID, by the way, because we're in lockdown, um, you know, we're seeing amazing traction for all these products because people hang out with other people and also people want to, they, they want social connection. And so those are the two experiences that we launched Highland with. And like I said, it's an early preview. You know, these are two out of maybe 10, 15 experiences will launch over time. Uh, and we're excited about the early feedback. You're showing content, you're streaming content. Is this content that you're, you're streaming with your partners such as YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, or is this content that you're building yourself? So no, we're, we're not in the content business. So our goal is to partner with the best content people out there, um, which is YouTube, Hotstar, Netflix, Prime, and all the other content partners that sort of, sort of different diverse content uh, needs for the market, and bring that capability inside the product. And um, you know, after having to spoken to multiple partners, they they, they, they want to um, do more with with Hike and Hike Land because 
Uh, most content applications are a single player experience. On a phone, it's just you on the phone and you're watching content. And Clan is all about a multiplayer experience. We're a social company. What we're really good at is great relationships, is social. We are not good at content. And vice versa, the content companies are great at content. And so can we put you know, our sort of heads together and build brand new experiences to allow people to hang out in the online world, especially during today's time where everybody's locked down at home? You talked about uh, replicating the bumping into people like you do in the real world, in the virtual world. Is it possible that I can also make new friends if I want to? Or is it essentially uh, like it is in the real world? If I know you, then I bump into you. Otherwise, you're just a stranger. So it's, it's both. If you know people really well and you want to bring those relationships to hype, we built the home for you. It's for existing relationships. And then you can go out there on the big screen, watch some content, hang out with people that you don't know and see their hype motions and actually make new friendships. And we're actually already seeing, by the way, with the early preview, a couple of thousand new friendships being formed every day, which is phenomenal. And this is not just you know male, female, it's the same gender as well. So it's to kind of enable like-minded people to meet and build connections. And that's pretty exciting. So I'm assuming that it's multi-purpose because it could also then become a dating app. Yeah, it's it's sort of like the real world, right? You have your home where you're comfortable and you're, you know, you're with people that you enjoy hanging out with, and then you have outside the home. Our goal is to sort of build around the existing behaviors that exist in the offline world. And if people want to use this platform to meet other people of the opposite gender, so be it. And our goal is as a as a platform is to make sure we can do that in a fun, magical, and safe way in Highland. What kind of uh, guidelines uh, uh, for both safety and privacy have you put into place so that one feels secure while mingling uh, within that virtual space? We've done a few things. One is um, we allow people to create their hike emoji, the avatar, with a snap of a photo. And you can just take a photo of yourself using machine learning. We bring uh, the avatar to life. Um, and so, so you sort of have this, the best version of you you can be in the online world. Second is, uh, we only allow one message to go across to the other person. Um, and if the other person does not respond, you can not message them. This is for the big screen. On the big screen, if you want to message somebody new, you can only send one message. Third, we put a lot of checks in place using machine learning to ensure that if people are on the platform and they're kind of inclined to do bad behavior, and let's say that first message is more of an explicit message, we check that. And that message doesn't even go to the recipient because we don't want to promote bad behavior on this platform. What's the kind of uh, user base you've got so far? So it's a great question. So we launched uh, Hike Sticker Chat um, in Q1 uh, last year. Uh, I think March last year we've officially announced it. Uh, Hike Sticker Chat has grown to you know millions of weekly actives now, um, and inside of that we launched Hike Moji, uh, and inside of that we launched Hike Lab. And so um, we can see that um, not only are people spending about 35 minutes per day on Hike Sticker Chat, comfortably above 35 minutes per day, but the core of users that are spending time in Hike Land that are using Hike. 60 to 65 minutes per day, which is incredible. That is an hour a day of your time. Sure, which brings me to my next question, and that's really a revenue. So what's the, the monetization uh, plan looking for this? Uh, the average time spent is about 35 minutes. That's great news because that's a lot of time. Uh, now, how are you going to make money off that? That's a great question. Um, you know, the... The nature of our business is that we're a bit space business. And what that means is uh, the value in the business, the value in the product is all sitting in the pixels and the code online. We actually have no ties to the atomic world. We have no inventory, we have no logistics, we have no warehousing. And so in a bit space business, 
Uh, we have this saying, which is we experiment with features a lot to see what's going to work and what's not going to work. And to us, revenue is one more feature. You can have a, a free sticker and you can have a paid sticker. It's just one line of code. And so the way we experiment with features, we also experiment with the ways we generate revenue. So you'll see us, and I've been talking about this for some time, that in 2020, you'll see us experiment with the ways we're going to generate revenue. And as a matter of fact, we're not more than a couple of months away from the first revenue experiment that we're going to launch, which is going to happen um, in 2020. And we expect to have not just one, but multiple experiments on revenue in 2020. So that's one. So that's the, the foundation of how we think about revenue. Second is, what's the business model? You know, we're, we're completely against the idea of ads in the traditional sense because it no longer puts the user at the center. Um, we're big believers that because payments have become seamless, finally, newer business models can emerge. And so the, the business model we're chasing after is the one of microtransactions and the virtual economy, which is, you know, what will people transact for inside of your land? What are things that could be premium on hike land that people could transact with? Um, and if you look at, you know, the your your monthly statement on how much money you spend every month, I, I would guarantee you that for most of us, 40, 50 percent of that is stuff that you don't need. It's stuff that makes us feel good about ourselves. Human beings spend quite a lot of time and effort, and money making ourselves feel good about ourselves. And people are spending seven, eight, maybe nine hours a day online. That's half your waking life. So it's no surprise to us that some of that money you're spending in the offline world to make yourself feel good will shift online. And it's already happening. You know, people are spending money comfortably in the online world. It's content, it's music, it's games, it's apps, it's education. You know, all of that stuff is shifting online. And so it's our job to figure out what that virtual economy is going to look like in high land around the idea of the high motion. Could you give me an example of what kinds of things I could buy when you say I could buy and transact? Yeah, you could buy a premium t-shirt for your hike moji. You could buy a special headband for your hike moji. You could deck out the hike moji with premium items in the online world. And you know, this is a behavior that we've been seeing in China for 20 years now. And it's just made its way to the US in the last four or five years. And I feel like because payments have become smooth in India, and because people are spending so much time online, and because we built a fantastic avatar product in a virtual world product, these avenues will become viable to users and us uh, in the next uh, couple of months. I uh, believe your last valuation when you turned a unicorn uh, in 2016 was about $1.4 billion. Uh, is there any plan uh, going forward to raise another round of funding for all your new ventures? Of course, of course. Um, we'll talk about fundraising towards the end of the year. You know, we've been very, I think, mindful and thoughtful about how we've deployed our capital the last round that we raised. And as a company, we've been very consciously set up uh, to burn very, relatively speaking, very little money every month. In a bid space business, like I said, you don't have inventory, no logistics, no warehousing. The team's also pretty small. So, you know, your monthly burn as a company is very low, which allows us to extend the capital much longer than other companies. And so, which is why we've been able to extend the, the last round that we had, you know, so long. And uh, now that we have Hike Land, the Hike Moji, now we have traction on all these products, we actually have the company pointing in a sort of clear new direction with a uh, fantastic vision and an incredible team. I'd say uh, the best team we've built so far. Um, we're now ready for that next uh, round that'll come towards the end of the year. And uh, do you think India should go the China way where uh, we are uh, not allowed or rather banned to use uh, international products and you know, hence we support homegrown products? Or do you think this should be an equal playing field with, with the best tech and the best user experience wins? You know, it depends. It depends what India wants to do. Right? If you want to significantly grow the economy and have good local champions, which I think is very important to long -term, India's long-term success, then you have to foster an environment where you have a level playing field, which is difficult to do when you have everybody from the world, the West and the East, just jumping on this market, whether it's oversupplying it, whether it's bringing you know, capital and dumping that, it becomes very tough for businesses to um, you know, grow locally unless the market is regulated 
in regulated sectors, you've seen that we were Indian champions, bro, but the internet space for the large part is unregulated, so anybody can come and jump in. If you look at China, on the other hand, China completely closed off their economy for most of, in most parts of the economy, not just the internet economy. And in the last you know, two decades, they've become a massive economy, but the internet economy itself is a $3 trillion economy. That's bigger than India's entire economy today. So, you know, what they've done is, is not bad. And so if you really want to grow local companies, build a local ecosystem, you have to think about making a level playing field. And that becomes very difficult when the market is open and you have all these players who've had massive success and are generating massive, massive cash flow in their markets coming and building products for this country. And, you know, our competition's been global since day one. So we, we know what that feels like. And I feel like um, you know, the one question that I'm asking personally is, China has, ba uh, India has banned these Chinese apps, these 59 Chinese apps. And if it's about, you know, national security interests, and it's about foreign players having hundreds of millions of users in the country with their applications, why look at only China? Why not the rest of the world too? Would you look at taking Heikland International or restricting it only to the domestic market? Um, Hike and Hikeland as a product is available globally with the app stores, you can do that. And our focus in 2020 is predominantly on India, but 2021, let's see, um, maybe. Fair enough. On that note, thank you so much, Kavan. Really nice chatting with you. Uh, all the very best for your future endeavors and wishing you all the luck for Hikeland and uh, may this not only be a success in India, but also travel internationally and become a runaway success there as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me.